All right, this is Boxing with the Truth, and I am the Truth, and today is March 14th, 2015, and we are here today with pro boxing light heavyweight Marcus Oliveira. How you doing today, Marcus? Doing good. I'm doing good. What is nice up here in Kansas? <laughs> it's actually nice up here in Minnesota for once, too. Uh, that's good. Um, so let's just start off with some facts. Uh, your pro record's actually uh, 25 wins, 20 by knockout, one loss, and one draw. That's correct. And you're actually, um, you actually started your boxing career from in Wisconsin, right? Yes, Wisconsin. And uh, so some people might not even be aware of that because uh, unfortunately we don't get a lot of big names out of Wisconsin very often. So, but you are definitely yeah. one of them. And uh, and where did you start your boxing career at exactly? Um, I was Joe Sweet's boxing gym in uh, Pacino, Wisconsin, on the Manami Reservation. Okay, so you are a product out of the, the out of the um reservation down there. Yes. And they actually they've been known for many many years to to have some good amateur fighters and pros come out of there, right? That's correct. Yeah. Okay, so um, actually, I want to bring up a name on on your resume that a lot of people up here in Wisconsin, Minnesota, are familiar with, uh, Phil the Drill Williams. You, oh yeah, you you laughed. <laughs> Why did you laugh? Well, that was a that was a good fight for me and Phil. Well, yeah, he was uh, actually he was an eight zero when you fought him, and uh, actually. You got knocked down twice in that fight and came back and and beat him in the seventh round, right? And knocked him out. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I think that to uh, my amateur career, you know, you in amateurs you get dropped a lot of times. So, you know, you're used to it, you you adapt to it. Like it, it doesn't mean you lost. But you know, when you get dropped, that that ain't nothing. That just you know, I consider it like a lucky punch. You know, I'll get him next time. Nah, I think I even uh, smiled when I was on the ground and I got up. And I even waved him over, you know, knowing that he was going to uh, try to finish me up. But I was trying to get him to do that so I could, you know, um, block all the punches to wear him up. And that and, uh, and worked. So how come there was never a rematch? Did Phil ever ask for a rematch? Yeah, he did. Uh, well, um, uh, I'm not sure if he did. You know, uh, I, I would have given him one. I went to my dude again. Okay. You think it ever could, is it still a possibility that could happen, or no, you guys have just gone different directions? I uh, it came down to it, yeah. Okay. But uh, I, I got to get back in the ring here soon, too, also. Yeah, I wanted to bring that up, too. Is there a reason why uh, it's been over a year now since you've been out of the ring? I'm with Don King, so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm waiting on him, really. You know, I, I was ready last year. I'm, I'm still ready. You know, and I've been keeping in shape. Is this, uh, but uh, this summer, my man is working on some things, though. Okay, so um, speaking of Don King, is there is there contract issues going on? Anything you want to talk about? Okay. Um, I want to bring up uh, the first opponent that you actually fought with a winning record. I thought this was kind of interesting. Buck Smith. The guy had 180 wins, 18 losses, and two draws. How often do you come up against an opponent with a record like that? Uh, not, you know, not a lot. You know, Buck, Buck, uh, Buck uh, Smith, was it? Yeah. Yeah, you you TKO'd him in the second round. Yeah, you you was good the first first round. You know what I mean? It was one of them fights to see for the uh, intimidate your fighter, I guess. But uh, it, it didn't do nothing to me. But I mean, when you first heard of the guy and heard who you were gonna f fight, and uh, you heard about that record, <laughs> what did you think? Um. 
Well, I didn't uh, believe it at first. I was like, how the hell is someone have, you know, that many fights? <laughs> so, you know, um, I didn't look it up right away because I didn't want to get my mind wandering off of what was, you know, the fight ahead. But, uh, yeah, I had a lot of confidence, you know, being, you know, a light, you know real big at light heavyweight. And I really didn't think that he was going to phase me early. So, I just went in with uh, my own expectations on kind of like destroying him. Okay, also a name that's uh, known around the Midwest here that you fought, uh, Antoine Eccles. Yes. How how was that uh, going into that fight? You kind of knew who he was. People knew who he was. He was kind of a bigger name. Um, were you in, uh, what, what, did it did it uh, phase you at all going into that fight? You know, because of his name recognition. No, I, I knew that he was on his way down. You know, I just he's a name fighter, and I, and. Uh, we just got him to fight, but uh, I think, you know, he wasn't going to beat me. So you were basically just using him for a name on the resume. You already knew his career was kind of ending. Yeah, somewhat, but I was also um, hoping to get some work out of him. Well, and, unfortunately, you didn't yeah. get much work because you TKO'd him in the third round. Yes. Uh, he actually quit. Um, do you, uh, do you see yourself in the future, um, coming back up here to the Minnesota, Wisconsin area and, uh, giving the fans any fights up here or no? I do, you know, I, I got a lot of support up there. You know, uh, I love fighting up that way. Well, I'm sure the fans would love this. Yeah, I'm sure the fans would love to see you back up here. And so hopefully we can uh, look forward to that maybe in the next year or two, getting you up here and, and seeing you fight again live. Oh yeah, that'll, that'll be fun. I want to bring up uh, a comment that I saw by a reporter. I don't know how you uh, react to your critics if you just kind of blow off the comments or if they help motivate you. But uh, in your last fight that we're going to bring up um, against uh, Jurgen uh, Brahammer from Germany, who's 41-2. and two. Um, You guys fought for a WBA title and, and you lost by unanimous decision. Um, I mean, and I'm going to talk about the fight in a minute, but uh, I want to hear what you think of this comment. A, a reporter, box reporter, comment said, uh, "Lack of experience showed he lacked rhythm and he appeared to be muscle bound." What does that What does that mean to you? Yeah, he, he was right. I'd say he was right, but uh, you know, as far as the experience, uh, I think he's dead wrong on that. I and mean, I think the experience helped me do a fight. You know. Um, I always hear these stories about fighters going overseas, you know, and I never paid too much attention to that kind of stuff until it happened to me, you know. They, they sort of change you up that way. You know, I, I should have went up there uh, many days before, uh, uh, well, I should have went up there, I think, maybe 20 days prior, prior to the fight to get adjusted to the 90 day. Um, they didn't even have a gym for me to train at, so I had to go to, like, a gold gym to... That's not even a proper place to train at. And they told me I, I, was at the, I was at the facility getting ready to fight Jersey, and I got to 7.30. We didn't fight to midnight. And, but, you know, by that time, I was, I was dead. So a lot of fighters, a lot of fighters aren't even aware what what type of different things that they got to go through when they go to fight overseas because they're used to um, fighting to the same type of routine here in the states. So you kind of got thrown into that and weren't aware of it either. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean that's yeah. that's good to know for for fighters that have never been overseas that they they're not gonna yeah. they don't know exactly what they're expecting. Uh, yeah, you know I was. I was figuring I was fighting around, about like, you know, 9 o'clock or something. You know, we got there at 7.30, so I figured about 9 o'clock, maybe 10. That's what we do around here, and then got there, we didn't fight till midnight. Okay, let's talk about that fight a little bit. Now, according to the judges' cards, it was 117 to 110, 117 to 110, 115 to 112. So... I don't know exactly how two judges saw it one way, and then the other judge saw it a little bit closer. But, and then apparently there was a there was a little bit of controversy what happened in the tenth round. Some saw you just kind of drop to a knee, and they didn't understand why. Some say there was a low blow. Some say it was a legal hit. You tell me what it was. Uh, I think it was 
think he may have gotten this in the stomach, actually. So it was a legal hit? Uh, yeah, I believe so. So, so I mean, you went, you took a knee, so, I mean, it was a legitimate knockdown then? Yeah, uh, I missed that. Okay. Because, no, I saw different references of, of what people thought it was, so I thought the only way to clear it up was ask you, because you're honestly the one that knows wh where he hit you and why you took the knee. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was a body shot. That was my body shot. Okay. So, no, I've seen reports before, and I want to ask you again, and I really hope you do still want to fight this guy, because I'd love to see you fight him. Do you still want to basically call out Tavares Cloud? Yeah, I, I ran into Tavares two times and I wanted to fight him. You know, and Don said he was going to let us fight and he said he was going to make it happen, but that, you know, that never materialized. So. But still, I don't want to fight him yet. So you're still stay, saying on the record today that you still want Tavares Cloud? Okay, and now what about this, uh, I didn't know about the doppelganger supposedly until I uh, read up on it. Uh, the other Marcus Oliveira from Brazil, do you still want to fight him as well? Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, uh, I'll do whatever, yeah. I want to turn on the fight, the fight's a fight, you learn something from each time you get in the ring with somebody. Well, I mean, is there anybody out there right now? I know you haven't fought in a year, and once you get maybe a warm-up fight or two, is is there anybody out there besides those two guys that you'd love to get in the ring with right now in your division? Um, I love fighting hard punchers, people who can hit. To me, I, I see them as, uh, you know, bullies. I think they can do that to everyone, like, you know, like when I fought uh, Phil. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind fighting Cole, Cole Ross. Okay. Well, what about, like, uh, wouldn't you like eventually to get to uh, Chad Dawson or Adonis Stevenson? Yeah, any of them guys, actually. You know, I think I called, I, I'm pretty sure I called out uh, Adonis and um, uh, Chad Dawson when I was number one. You know, I was looking for an opponent. And you never heard nothing from either one of their camps? No. Hmm. Have you uh have, have you ever had any superstitions or rituals or habits that you need to do before a fight? Yeah, um, uh, I, I usually sleep <laughs> right up until maybe maybe ten or 10, ten to fifteen minutes prior to the fight. Yeah. So far uh, in your career. How how would you sum up your career's going? Are you satisfied the way it's going, or or do you do you wish you would have done things different, or or? Uh, I, yeah, yeah, I do. I wish I would have done you know things different, different. Definitely with the Germany fight, you know. Um, you know, like I said, I, I had a young team, and I wish I had some you know some experience, someone experience with me. You know, um, I would. I was in tremendous shape for that fight. I didn't put enough uh, um, hours in the, uh, the boxing department. You know, I should have been in the gym doing more of the speed bag knits, double end bag and sparring, but I was doing more strength conditioning. You see what I'm saying? I should have kept, I should have kept doing what was making me win. You know, I was doing more boxing than, than conditioning. I was doing both on 50-50. That's what got me to the top. And then I changed it and put more work in the Commission side, and then now uh, while I was starting to do the boxing, there's this, you know, the time and everything was on. Uh, everything was train wreck. Well, with uh, well, with Al Heyman coming up, that part. oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, with Al Heyman, oh, um, with Al Heyman bringing the the boxing back to the national TV, and all these guys getting together to to do this. Do you see yourself uh, maybe possibly on Spike or CBS or NBC maybe in the next year on on some some uh, national fights again? Um, yeah, I really do. You know, all I gotta do is win uh, maybe two big fights. You know, and, uh, I really think I can. You know, I, I got a good record, and uh, any of the heavyweights want to, you know, step up, and, you know, we can go about a fight, do something happening. 
if uh, all the things that you've gone through in your career and stuff and uh, with management or just, you know, not getting fights all the time when you want or the fights you want. Now you said the experience going overseas. And uh, like you said, coming from uh, the reservation, and I know a lot of good fighters come from there and a lot of kids get into boxing. What would you say to a kid right now um, coming off the, let's say, fight in, in the reservation that's about to turn pro? What, ex what, what, based on your experience, what advice would you give him? Um, watch out for certain promoters because they they'll put you in there with anybody. You know, you gotta make sure that when you sign with somebody, they take care of you. You know, I've seen, seen it all the time. The promoters put uh, good fighters in with somebody way, you know, way over their head and just ruin their career. So, yeah. All right, and uh, I'm going to ask you one more question. We all know the big fight has been signed, the Manny Pacquiao against Mayweather, May 2nd. Um, and I'm assuming you're going to watch it like everybody else in the boxing world. Break down this fight for me. Oh, man. And, and I'm probably going to catch hell for this. I'm, I'm going with Manny Pacquiao on this one. Okay, but break it uh, I, break it down for me. What has Mayweather got to do to win, and what has Pacquiao got to do to win? To win? Um, dang, they're, they're both... I can tell you what I think is going to happen. I think... You know, Mayweather's been getting hit a lot in his last, what, three, four fights. And you've never seen that before. He's been getting staggered. I don't know if you've seen his last fight. We fought... Uh, the dude from was it, Argentina? Yep, I think he's slowing down a little bit. Yeah, so and then, then now you got Manny Pacquiao. You know he got dropped. He still hasn't missed a beat yet. He's still continually, you know, attacking, and it doesn't look like he's getting, you know, like he lost the beat actually. You know, I think, uh, and and then he has Teddy Roach who really looks the fighters over to even help him more so in the fight. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going with Pacquiao on this side, yeah. Okay. All right, well, listen, I'm going to end the interview on that note. I appreciate you taking time uh, out of your schedule, and uh, hopefully, you know, we're going to hear good things uh, this summer coming from you and your camp that you're going to be back in the ring. Possibly, like I said, uh, the boxing fans up here in Minnesota and Wisconsin would love to see you up here in the ring as well. And uh, hopefully we're going to see you on a national TV fight before the end of the year with all this uh, all this boxing back on uh, national TV. How so? How so? All right, anything to say to your fans, Marcus? Just, uh, watch, up, uh, watch out for me. I'm, you know, I really do want to fight in Minnesota and, and I'm trying to make it happen. All right, and the truth has spoken.